Clark Penny Whistle. It's got six holes in it, and the way that you hold it is you put your left hand thumb on the back, kind of in between the top two holes, and you put your pointer finger, your middle finger, and your ring finger on the top three holes, and then the other hand does the same thing. It puts the thumb on the back between second and third holes, and then first, second, and third finger covers the holes. Now sometimes I do place my pinky on the bottom, like if you have most of the fingers up, that helps balance it while you're using it. And so that's how you hold the penny whistle, left hand on the top, right hand on the bottom. Now when you blow into the penny whistle, you just gently rest the back part here, the wooden part, it's called a fipple. You gently rest it on your lower lip, and then you take your upper lip over the top of it and just blow on it like you would any kind of whistle. Now, the hard part is getting all the fingers down on all the holes, covering 100% of them without being over aggressive. Because if you push down really hard, you stress your hands out. You want to be really gentle and just cover all the holes with the fat part of your finger. So cover all the holes and just practice blowing and seeing how um, of an even sound that you can get. breathing, don't breathe into your chest, like <gasps> breathe down into your stomach. So you breathe into your stomach and pooch your stomach out, and if you just push your stomach out, you will automatically draw in air. So breathe out, now breathe in by just pooching your stomach and opening your mouth. So you don't have to <gasps> gasp for air, you just gently breathe in, and you see how long you can hold out your notes, keeping the air flow nice and steady. If you are going from note to note to note, you, there are several different ways to stop the tones between the notes. You can just stop your air, like, or what I like to do, especially on faster songs, is take the tip of my tongue in my mouth and touch the roof of my mouth, and that stops the, without my whole body stopping the airflow, the tongue just cuts it off for a second and then brings it back in. So practice what that feels like, cutting it off by just stopping the air, or stopping it with your tongue, actually. Now, all fingers down on your penny whistle is a D note, and if you're familiar with the piano, there's middle C, and the next white key up is D, and that is all fingers down on your penny whistle. And then if you lift up the bottom finger, it becomes E. If you lift up your ne next finger, it becomes F sharp, and the next finger is G. Now that's when I put my pinky down here to counterbalance, and the next finger up is A, next finger up is B, all fingers off is C sharp. Now, all fingers down, except the top one, leave the top one off and blow a little harder, just a tiny bit, is your high D. Now you can go up a whole nother scale by just blowing harder. So you put that top finger down, lift the bottom one up, now that's the same E that we played a minute ago, only an octave higher. If you blow gently, if you blow harder. Next finger up, F sharp, blow gentle, you blow harder, it's high. The same with the uh, G, A, B, C sharp. Now getting that second high D is usually not a good idea, it's just kind of out of tune, and I never use that one. Practice going up the entire two octave scale nice and slow.
is doing it backwards. So practice going up and down those scales, nice and gentle. Times practice stopping the air by stopping your breathing or stopping the air with your tongue. Practice it nice and slow, and then a little faster and a little faster until you can do it really fast. Practice doing that and connect every single note. I didn't break my breath or stop my breath between any of the notes. I went all the way up, took a breath, and then went all the way down. And then practice it disconnecting each note. And so you practice taking quick breaths where you feel like you need them without breaking the tempo of the exercise. Now we're going to do another exercise. Instead of going from one note to the next, we're going to start skipping around a little bit. So you're going to play the lowest note and then lift up two fingers. Then put down one finger, lift up two fingers. Put down one finger, lift up two, down one, up two. Down one, off two, down one, then all fingers down except the top one, all fingers off, high E, high D. And so it's a pattern in the notes. You play one, you skip a note, you go back down, you skip a note. Here's what it sounds like. I just went E, F sharp, D. And so practice that nice and slow, disconnecting the notes. Practice speeding it up and even connecting the notes. Another exercise would be to walk up two notes and then back down and then start on the next note up like this. Even just come up with your own exercises, practicing, getting familiar with where to put your fingers. And it's like you're training your fingers in muscle memory. Because when I pick up the penny whistle, my hands know right where to go. They feel for the holes, they go there, and that's where they know to go. And so you have to practice and practice some exercises. And it builds muscle memory in your hands so they just automatically know to go to the right places and cover the holes 100% to give nice smooth tones. So now we're going to um, work on a song. We're going to do Mary Had a Little Lamb. Now 
I cut my breath off with my tongue between every single one of those notes. So now I'm going to play it really slow and just listen to it and let your fingers just go up or down as the music sounds. And extra fast. Alright, now we're going to work on Amazing Grace. Since we're in the key of D, we're going to start on an A note. Now this song is going to use low, the low octave and the high octave. So you're going to start on low A and then immediately go to your high D. sharp and high A a lot. So I'm, I'm going to play it nice and slow and just think about letting your fingers just go to the right notes. If it sounds like it's going up, memorize where it's going and just listen to it. faster. I connected with my breath and some of the notes I disconnected by stopping my tongue and if you saw where I breathed there's there's sensible breathing spots in the song if you just listen to it and uh, think about it you can find the right spots like if there's two close notes like fast fast notes together it's really hard to get a breath but if you have a longer note it's easier to grab a breath at the end of it before the next note so just Keep practicing. I'll post more later. <laughs> 